The Chinese have announced that they're going to go to the moon. In fact, they will probably beat the United States. NASA last year admitted that their time frame is behind the Chinese time frame. Makaku shares China's incredible lunar discovery and takes you on an unprecedented journey among the stars. What could be this month's unexpected discovery? How will it change our understanding of the universe? People of color will land on the moon, then we will build around the moon. Travel through the universe with us to answer these burning questions and uncover exciting truths hidden at the center of the moon. Get ready for a real adventure. Mysterious spring lunar water source, our closest neighbor in space, the moon has always been a mystery, and recently, Chinese scientists have made surprising discoveries that begin to answer some of the biggest questions about the moon. Just two years ago, China launched a robotic spacecraft into the vast dark area of the moon that we can see from Earth. This region is called Oceanus Procellarum, or Ocean of Storms. The spacecraft, called Chang'e 5, landed near a large mountain on the moon called Mount Lammer. The most satisfying thing is that, for the first time in nearly 50 years, a spacecraft collected samples from the moon and sent them back to Earth. The last time this happened was in 1976 during the Soviet invasion. Many scientists believe that all the water on the moon disappeared due to the heat when the moon was formed approximately 4 billion years ago. But it turned out not to be so. There is actually a lot of water frozen into ice on the moon. This ice is usually found at the poles of the moon, which are always dark. NASA plans to send astronauts to this region as access to these waters will be beneficial for future expeditions. Let's uncover this amazing phenomenon. China doesn't just see water, more than 60 ounces of lunar soil and rock samples were returned rich in rare minerals such as helium, 3. But things don't end there. Chang'e 5 used onboard instruments to take measurements before returning to Earth, indicating that water may be present on the moon's surface. The question then becomes, where does this water come from? While some scientists believe that it may have been brought to the moon by a star, others believe that there may be invisible water on the moon. The answer to this big question may be found in lunar samples collected from the northwestern side of the moon by China's Chang'e 5 spacecraft. According to reports from Chinese and European pros, this model contains small glass beads of different colors, like small pearls. So how did they get there? Perhaps they were created from the heat of meteorites hitting the moon. The most satisfying thing is that these little glasses have water lines. Yes, you heard right. There is water on the moon. Scientists from the Chinese Academy of Sciences have shown that there are approximately 2,000 kilograms of water in the crystals per ton of lunar soil. The surprising thing is that these glass beads can be found anywhere on the moon, from the equator to the poles, because the moon has been hit by meteors throughout its life. While scientists believe that the water on the moon is mostly in the form of hydroxy groups, it is also found in molecular form. They estimate that up to 270 billion tons of water could be trapped in the glass beads. In 2010, NASA estimated that there were approximately 600 million tons of ice in the moon's arctic crater, but this new discovery shows that the moon's arctic crater has a larger lake. The best part? This water can provide a whole new dimension of life that we never expected. The Lammer samples returned by Chang'e 5 are smaller than those collected by the US Apollo program or Soviet robotic missions. Recent research shows that the glass containing these pearls was formed 2 billion years ago, specifically during the meteorite crisis, similar to the events that wiped out the dinosaurs 68 million years ago. You may ask, how does water get into moon crystals? It turns out this might be because of our sun. Scientists believe that the beneficial effect of hydrogen atoms from the solar wind enters the glass beads and combines with oxygen. When the sun heats the beads, they release some hydrogen, which plays an important role in the moon's water cycle. So these glass beads are not just water, they control how the moon moves around it. With this discovery, the difficulty of finding a place is on the brink of change. This prompted scientists to investigate whether water on the moon could support life for humans on long-term missions far from Earth. A research team from the Institute of Geology and Geophysics of the Chinese Academy of Sciences examined the data in depth. Can they find it? There are signs of open water in the Chang'e 5 text. Scientists identify H2O molecules by their spectral reflectance, which is a measure of how a material reflects sunlight. The impact is far-reaching. There may be more water on the moon than previously thought, said Matt Siegler, a senior scientist at the Planetary Science Institute in Tucson, Arizona. This is a far cry from the distant space the Apollo astronauts described when they returned in 1969. The idea that the moon was a dry barren wasteland began to collapse. The Indian Space Research Organization Chandrayaan-1 found signs of hydration on the sun's surface, but it is not yet clear whether it is water or hydroxy, a substance similar to gutter cleaner. 
Postdoctoral researcher Katie Hannibal said later research showed ice was present in shadowed craters near the moon's poles. When scientists re-examined the original Apollo samples, they found that water molecules trapped within glass beads and minerals caused head-scratching and some skepticism. Is this water really moon water or water from Earth? In Houston, what happened a month before China's lunar lander Chang'e 5 detects water in the solar system, NASA is working on an announcement. They claimed that there was water in the moon of the sun. They were all 45,000 feet above the ground. Yes, you heard right. NASA uses the Stratospheric Infrared Observatory to obtain signals at specific wavelengths of water molecules. These findings promisingly suggest that water on the lunar surface may be more abundant than we thought and may be longer than ice at the moon's poles. All previous studies pointed to the existence of water, but the real game-changer was China's recent moon landing. As geologist Matt Siegler points out, the resulting spectral reflectance data must be carefully adjusted for temperature to determine how much water is present, but the challenge is to determine the temperature of the object from very long distances. This is what makes Chang'e 5's mission extraordinary. It can measure temperature directly by landing on the moon, eliminating uncertainty. But don't expect to see babbling streams or sparkling lakes on the moon just yet. Chang'e 5 found a small body of water hidden in the lunar soil in a region ironically called Oceanus Procellarum. Scientists believe this water may be the product of the solar wind, a flow of radioactive material emitted by the sun. The water is formed when the solar wind, rich in hydrogen atoms, hits the oxygen in the moon's soil and rocks. Interestingly, more water is seen in lunar rocks in the same area, indicating another known water source, rare moon crystals. But there is more to the story. Scientists have made another jaw-dropping discovery, a rare solar system that could power the Earth. The China National Space Administration has made headlines for its success in space exploration. Competing with the United States National Aeronautics and Space Administration, China built a station, embarked on many missions, and made great discoveries. The last of these surprised the scientific world. So what exactly is the moon theory discovered by Michio Kaku? The crystals found in lunar basalt grains in 2020 are made of a material previously unknown to science and contain key components for the nuclear fusion that powers the sun and stars in our galaxy. Following the leak, the China National Space Administration and the China Atomic Energy Agency announced that a new lunar material called Felspa was discovered after China's Chang'e 5 robot mission. It was discovered by scientists from the Beijing Institute of Uranium Geology while examining the lunar surface for samples. China now joins the United States and the former Soviet Union as the only countries to have discovered new material on the moon. This is thanks to the first lunar sample return mission since 1970, which successfully returned more than 1.7 kilograms of lunar samples to Earth. The cherry on top? The new moon material was named after the Chinese mythological moon goddess Chang'e by the Beijing Institute of Uranium Geology. They call it Chang'e. Now let's talk about the mission that brought us this extraordinary discovery the Chang'e 5 mission robot. It set off from Hainan province and returned to Earth with 1,731 g of lunar rocks and soil, 46 years after it last collected lunar material. The mission is an exciting 23-day adventure and one of China's most challenging missions to date. After successful recovery, the lunar samples were divided into 21 groups and sent to scientists in 13 laboratories to work on 31 research projects. This achievement recorded China's name in the history of space exploration, becoming the third country after the United States and the former Soviet Union to discover lunar data. Many departments, including the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the Ministry of Education, and the Ministry of Natural Resources, have contributed to the study of lunar structures. The tiny rocks found on the moon are no wider than a human hair, but they open doors for scientists that they could not even imagine. These crystals, formed during the volcanism of the moon about 1.2 billion years ago, contain an extraordinary element, helium-3. Such a big surprise forced Michio Kaku to announce the news to the world. We'll return to Earth in the next few hours with the structure of star rock and debris. Chinese ground crews wait for an unmanned mission to return to Beijing with the first lunar samples in more than 40 years. Helicopters carry the spacecraft over the snow-covered grasslands of Inner Mongolia. The containers hold large moon rocks collected in the cold, dark desert. Our future lunar missions aim to collect lunar samples at the poles and in regions not yet explored. Now let's look at what makes this substance special. Scientists can use helium-3 for a variety of purposes. Since it is not radioactive and produces no dangerous byproducts, it is ideal for nuclear fusion reactions that release large amounts of energy. Each isotope contains an additional neutron, which means it can undergo nuclear fusion reactions to produce hydrogen. 
the presence of this unusual element on the moon could be an important resource for Earth. Helium-3 is extremely rare on our planet, so we can use it to generate large amounts of electricity by combining it with deuterium. Deuterium, found in seawater, reacts with helium-3 to produce a huge amount of energy with no radioactive waste, a perfect combination for the future of Earth's energy needs. But there is a problem, Earth's current sources of helium-3 are insufficient for this purpose. Imagine the possibilities if we could harvest helium-3 from the moon, especially from newly discovered moon crystals. We could potentially fuel nuclear fusion power plants and provide virtually unlimited clean energy to our planet. This could change the way we power our homes, industries, and transportation, creating a greener, more sustainable future. Now, China has plans to set up a lunar base, possibly in collaboration with Russia, to extract these valuable resources. The lunar surface is full of challenges, extreme temperatures, a lack of atmosphere, and a surface covered in fine, abrasive dust. However, the potential benefits are too great to ignore. Scientists and engineers are working on developing the technology needed to establish a permanent presence on the moon. Robots, automated mining equipment, and habitat modules will be crucial for sustaining human life on the lunar surface. The recent discovery of water on the moon is another critical factor in making lunar colonization a reality. Water can be used for drinking, growing food, and splitting into hydrogen and oxygen for rocket fuel. This will reduce the need to transport supplies from Earth, making lunar missions more cost-effective and sustainable. In the coming decades, we may see a thriving lunar colony where humans live and work, mining valuable resources and conducting groundbreaking research. This will pave the way for further exploration of our solar system, including missions to Mars and beyond. The moon, once a symbol of mystery and the unknown, is now becoming a beacon of hope and possibility for the future of humanity. As we stand on the brink of this new era, we can only imagine what other incredible discoveries await us among the stars. The journey has just begun, and the future is bright.